Hi, I'm a field applications engineer with LDRA, and today I'm going to be demonstrating the Aerospace and Defense Productivity Package with the general idea of achieving compliance with the DO-178C standard. So first, we'll need to discuss what the different levels of DO-178C are and how they relate to our LDRA software. DO-178C is broken down into various different levels based on your project, and the levels that LDRA sees most commonly from our customers are going to be levels A through C. These are the three highest levels of DO-178, and they all contain different requirements to obtain compliance with them. For level A, which is the highest level of compliance for DO-178, you'll need to identify and fix violations and do a formal analysis for safety critical code when it comes to static analysis. For code coverage, you'll need to achieve 100% statement, branch, and MCDC coverages. And for your documentation, it will need to be completely comprehensive and it will need to include some form of safety assessment. For level B, the second highest level, for static analysis, you'll need to identify medium and high severity violations, document any findings, and fix the high severity violations. For code coverage, you'll need 100% statement coverage and branch decision coverage. For documentation, it will again need to be comprehensive, but it is less exhaustive than level A. For level C, for static analysis, we'll need basic violation detection and identification, and we'll be focusing mainly on the medium severity violations, with some others being excluded. For code coverage, we'll only need 100% coverage on statement coverage, and branch decision coverage requirements are less stringent. And for documentation, we do need it, but it is much more minimal when compared to level A and level B. So for LDRA, we actually provide solutions for all of these different requirements. So for static analysis, we use the program TB Vision to run static analysis to identify and classify static violations. We will be using TB Exclude to justify and exclude any irrelevant violations that may not apply to us. For code coverage, we'll be using TB Vision again to run any dynamic analysis and view any associated code coverage with that. And we'll be using TB Run to run any unit tests associated with our requirements and to view any associated code coverage. For documentation, we'll be using TB Reports to generate and view various different HTML reports associated with static analysis, dynamic analysis, unit testing, and overall DO-178C compliance. So, with all this said, let's move on and take a look at our LDRA software. So with our tool suite open here, uh, the first step that we need to do to analyze our code is to run the build import. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to automatically gather information from our build uh, and allow LDRA to see visibility into our compiler uh, and observe it as the build happens. So the first things that we need to set for this are going to be obviously a build command uh, as well as a start in directory. And once we have those set up, uh, we can actually just run our build command and TB make log parser. And this is going to give LDRA visibility into our build. And you can see it's done. Uh, it'll build just like normal, just through the command line. So with our build import complete, uh, the next thing that we can do is we can open up TB Vision. All right, with our project successfully imported into TB Vision here, uh, the first thing that we should want to do is run static analysis. Uh, and before we even do that, though, a lot of people fall into this trap, you'll want to make sure that you set the uh, analysis standard option here. Um, LDRA has a bunch of different standards available to it. Um, and you can scroll through and see all of these for yourself. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use the JSF++ standard. Uh, this is very relevant to the aerospace and defense industry. This was the standard used for the F-35 uh, fighter jet. So we'll hit OK here, and we'll set that as our coding standard. And then from there, we can run static analysis with this button here. This will take about a minute or so, and we'll come back when it's done. All right. So our static analysis has finished here, and the first thing that we'll want to do to take a look at our results is to right-click on our set name and view the code review. This is going to give us all of the appropriate violations that are related to our set here. And the first thing you might be asking is, okay, I have all of these violations. How do I see where they are in my actual source code? 
Um, in order to do that, all you have to do is double click on any one of these individual violations and it will highlight the actual violation here. So in this case, they're complaining about these these styles of comments. Uh, and this will open, of course, in any text editor that you choose, whether it be an IDE or just Notepad. Uh, in my case, I chose Notepad++ just for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, so if we want to get rid of this violation, um, this violation in specific is complaining about an old style comment. Let's say that doesn't matter to us for some reason. Um, if that doesn't matter to us, what we can actually do is we can exclude this type of uh, violation here just by right clicking and then we can go to our violation exclusions and then we have our options here we can exclude the individual violation uh, we can exclude all of that violation in the file or all in the system uh, and of course we have the choice to do the uh, ldra phase code here or the actual jsf standard uh, in my case i'm just going to exclude this individual violation here and we'll get this pop-up and we can enter in a justification And of course, if I wanted to add any more information into this, I can hit the expand button and we can take a look at all of the different options here. We can uh, exclude violations by security level. Um, we can also exclude them as a range of source lines so we can make sure that these don't get uh, changed when we change the source code. Um, we can also add in a username here to see who is running the exclusion. Uh, and we can even set up a date range if we want to temporarily exclude a violation like this. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to add the exclusion. And if I refresh my code review here, we and now we can see that that 207s violation of use of the old style comments is in gray of course i can close my old code review these are stored in an external ini file so that you can actually pass these uh, to your coworkers and uh, work off of the same exclusions so this is very handy uh, for working on your static analysis violations uh, of course you can also edit the code directly from the notepad violation in here and then rerun your static analysis and get rid of the violation that way that is also a way to do this the next thing that we'll want to take a look at is going to be the code review report uh, we can get to that just by right clicking on our set name up here and viewing the code review report that will pop up in a html window here and this is very handy uh, as far as determining your compliance with whatever coding standard you selected. So in our case, uh, we'll get some very standard information up at the top here. We have the date that the analysis was run on, the date the report was produced on, and the LDRA version. Uh, all very handy for auditing purposes, as well as our coding standard and the pass-fail result. Uh, if we scroll down, we get an overall code review summary here. This will show all of the different possible violations within our coding standard and whether or not we violated them as well as how many times we violated them. Um, these are also hyperlinked so if I wanted to go directly to the JSF standard I can do that and it will take me directly there. If I minimize this here and we scroll down we can also see our violation exclusion summary here with the violation exclusion that we had added. And then we can also see the unique violations and failure density for each procedure in our system. So with that covered, uh, we can actually take a look at the dynamic analysis portion of uh, this demonstration and we'll head back to our regular tool suite. All right, back in TB Vision now, our next step is going to be running the dynamic analysis. And with running dynamic analysis comes obtaining code coverage. So in order to run that dynamic analysis, the first thing I'm going to do is simply click this button. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to run through a process called instrumentation. This is how LDRA tracks the code coverage uh, of your set. So effectively, we're adding probes into your code uh, and making a copy of your source code, of course. Um, and with those probes, we're able to detect uh, the beginning and end of each statement uh, and we can detect then if each of those probes are hit that that whether or not that statement has been covered um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply going to exercise my instrumented code uh, we can see that it popped up in the command prompt here so I'm going to exercise this now and we'll skip through to once I'm finished with that
So I've finished exercising my code, and now we're going to be running through the dynamic analysis. Uh, right now, LDRA is gathering up all of the information uh, that was gathered during the uh, build process, uh, and we're going to be parsing through all of the execution history files and making it all look pretty so that we can take a look at our reports. And we can see that our execution here is finished, our dynamic analysis is done, and if we want to view any of the dynamic analysis results, we'll simply right click on our set name and we'll view our code coverage. And this is going to show us the code coverage for every single uh, function and file in our set. We can see that we actually got some pretty decent coverage in terms of statement and branch decision. Uh, we still have some work needed in the MCDC category here. Um, but if we scroll down and find the file that we were just looking at, we can see that we don't have full coverage yet, especially in the MCDC category. So if I want to take a look at this and figure out exactly what's going on and what the deal is with my missing coverage here, I can simply right click and I can view the pass fail flow diagram. And what this flow diagram allows us to do is really just to narrow down specifically which areas of the code are actually covered and which are not. And I can go through and select each of these different nodes and we can see in the actual source code where it's highlighted. Uh, and this is very, very handy for unit testing or for just exercising your uh, dynamic analysis in general, because dynamic analysis, after all, is cumulative. If I wanted to go back and rerun dynamic analysis with different user inputs to gain more coverage, I can do that. Uh, the other option is to target specific areas of our code that are lacking in coverage and gain that coverage. Uh, and that would be through a process called unit testing. Uh, and that will be what we are doing next. Um, but before we do that, I would like to go back to TB Vision and take a look at the code coverage report. In order to get to our code coverage report, we'll just scroll up to the top in our code coverage window here, and we will right click on our set name and we'll view our code coverage report. Code coverage report uh, contains quite a bit of useful information, and it's also similarly laid out to the code review report that we looked at earlier. Uh, of course, we have our DO-178C standard. Uh, we can see that our level A of DO-178C was not attained. Uh, that's not surprising for a first run of dynamic analysis. Um, we'll have to do some unit testing, uh, preferably some requirements-based unit testing later on. Um, so for now, with this run, we have 87% statement coverage, 77% branch decision coverage, and 34% MCDC coverage. This MCDC coverage is really important for DO-178C, so it's something that you'll want to look into uh, and make sure that you are setting up your test cases to get all of this MCDC coverage correctly. Um, of course, we have summaries based on broken down by system, as well as by file, as well as by each procedure. And of course, each of these are hyperlinked. So this is the file that we were, sorry, the procedure that we were looking at earlier. Uh, so I can quickly just click on this and see specifically which lines of code were covered and which lines of code were not covered. So the next step in our process here is going to be running unit tests. So we'll head back to TB Vision and we can get that started. In order to open up our set in TB Run and start some unit tests, all we have to do is right click on our set and click on Start TB Run Interactively. The first thing we should do once TB Run is open is to start creating a sequence of test cases that we'll want to run in order to get us some additional coverage. I actually created a sequence called Cell, and we can see it contains six test cases. This will be run in white box mode, allowing us to get some additional coverage for this. And when I run this, I do expect these six test cases to pass. As we can see here, they have passed. With our test cases passed now, we can open up TB reports, and we can take a look at our DO-178C specific report. And in this case, I'm going to take a look at the level A report, since it has the most information in it. Opening this compliance report up, we can see all the various different planning and development process options that we need to have completed in order to pass DO-178C. We can see that a few of them fail, but that's okay for now. We can always go back and fix those. We can also take a look at the test manager report, and this will give us a good overview of all of the different reports that we've taken a look at already. We have a code review report, 
We have a quality review report. These are both from static analysis from before. We also have a test verification report giving us statement coverage, branch decision coverage, and MCDC coverage percentages. We also have a report based off of our unit tests that we have down here. We have our sequences that we've inputted as well as whether or not they have passed. We can also dive into the MCDC test case planner. And this will help us decide or figure out how to organize our test cases for any MCDC decisions that we might have within our files. Thanks for watching this short video on the Aerospace and Defense Productivity Package. If you'd like to see more of our products in action, just go take a look at our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks again. Bye-bye.